Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. And if you're brand new to the channel, happy to have you join us. Pop into the comments. Let me know where you're joining from. For those of you who are new, I will come into the comments later this evening and say hi with a proper welcome. Um, this is Leo. For those of you who don't know, although he's a Gemini. Um, <laughs> And he is gradually learning how to share me with all of you. So, ciao mascot. Think of him that way. All right, I am pulling from Gateway of Light Activation to kick off this reading. Let's see what message comes through. Gaia Gateway Activation, Learning Experiences, Wisdom Transmission, Earth Intelligence. I like it, I like it a lot. Let's see, I'm gonna get you your message right from the guidebook. Um, gee, it's alphabetical. So you gotta know your alphabet. <laughs> okay, your message. Sometimes it is not our role to know how everything will unfold. When you draw this card, it's a reminder to trust the plan. The wisdom of Gaia is within you at this time, and you can enjoy the natural expansion that is taking place. You may have a tendency to go traveling and look to the stars for answers, but realize that the planet you call home has much to offer too. You have chosen to be here. This may not be easy to accept, especially if your current reality is a harsh one. But your current experiences are vital for your growth. The earth herself cannot escape the challenges that she is facing at this time. Learn from her strength. Learn from her yearning for a better future. Come back to her. She is your chosen home. Ooh, that one got me, Scorpio. And if you're a cross watcher, whoever you are watching, we're all here. It's our message for all of us. That one got me, um, especially as today, as I record this on the 12th, is the um, closing, essentially, of the Lionsgate portal. If you missed the Lionsgate reading that I did a few days ago on the 8th, um, go watch it. It was pretty lit, if you, if you ask me. All of the energies swirling around between all of us. It, yeah powerful reading not too late to watch it and even though the um energies of the portal uh you know the portal has an opening it has a peak it has a closing it, it, it's like the ceremonies of the olympiad right uh, there's still a homecoming there's still celebration there's still energies that are unfolding um as we march forth so Keep moving through the energy is what I want to say. All right. And I am doing a Twin Flame Soulmate spread. So I will pull the spread, give you my general impressions. We'll get details from the clarifiers. Okay. See? A little bit stuck, maybe overthinking of this is your shared energy with your person. Um, you may both be <coughs> questioning a lot of things. Um, stuck with a lot of self-limiting beliefs. Um second guessing yourselves wow some pretty big heady thoughts for sure so it makes sense beautiful oh scorpio i love this for you and again remember it can always come through reversed so um uh, this first card here for each of you represents sort of where you're at right now with regard to the connection despite your shared energy you each have an individual part of the mission this card here is your karmic challenge. Kind of where are you hung up or what are you working through? This card here is the opportunity and the divine guidance will follow. So we already know that there's something like a snag in the silk, um, overthinking or second guessing or self doubts. Um, and what you, my loves, are working with the energy in this connection is about the love of a lifetime the gift from spirit possibly this is someone you see as the one 
and what where your person is at with this connection right now is it's themes around commitment themes around the vows we make and take in life and our obligations to them so um, the higher fit also speaks to our higher self you know the best that we can be and um and being responsible to our obligations you know backing it all up but i always look at the higher fence since i read about relationships it is about a conventional committed relationship right so that's where they're at right now and interesting that you're both kind of wrestling with something in in terms of like we, where your your head head is at and both of these cards are asking you to drop into your heart. You know, it's not something you can think your way through. It, it, it's something that you have to feel your way through. And the first step for this figure is into a puddle and a tarot water is feelings and emotions. So maybe the path out of this prison of your own making the path out of it is through your feelings. How do you really feel about each other? How do you feel about um, a possible future, a possible commitment? Something more intentional, maybe. All right, so your karmic struggle on that vein is about, you know, going it alone. The Nine of Pentacles is a single person in, a ta in the tarot, you know? Just because you meet the one doesn't mean you got, you know, you got to do anything about it. Uh, maybe there's a karmic challenge there about always the bridesmaid, never the bride. I'm just throwing that out there because it's a general reading. It's not a private reading. So I'm just receiving all the energy. It will be different for a lot of you. Um, and so take it as it resonates. Your person's karmic challenge has to do with seeing what they want and not hesitating going for it claiming it that is the king of wands and his upright energy i see it i want it i claim it it's mine it's very self-assured very confident very passionate right not gonna let you sit on the market for a hot second nope but i love that this person right now with regard to this connection is even you know, got conscious awareness around commitment, conscious awareness around that construct. So the opportunity here is those seeds of intention have been planted. And if they haven't, now would be the time. But, and as I said in the Lionsgate reading, I use the Light Seer's Tarot. And in that deck, all these pentacle things are beneath the soil. And all the, the gardener can see it, and he's at ground level and all you see is his eyes and his hands touching the little green sprouts coming up and that's the true meaning of the seven of pentacles and the true meaning of the seven of pentacles talks about patience and talks about the day you plant the seed is not the day the garden grows so this kind of you know doesn't really speak to the true meaning of the card as well visually as this light seer's tarot so the opportunity here is you know now that you have planted those seeds of intention it's it's about the patience of you know can you live with not really seeing the results right away can you can you hold that patience as things evolve organically the opportunity here is for some patience as things unfold the trust you have and the intentions you have set and then the divine guidance has some, you know, there is some triumph here. It's a victory card, but and it's a peace card. So if there's any need for some, you know, reconciliation, great. It's available to you. It's divine guidance. Is make peace around anything where the peace might not exist. But I think based on the cards that I'm seeing here, it's more about compromise. It's more about where do you agree on things? What do you have in common? Where can you meet in the middle and make some negotiations and some compromises? Because you're both sort of coming really close to something powerful. And yet you're doing yourselves a disservice by overthinking it, over processing the whole thing. You're in your own way. 
as a like shared energy thing. All right. Let's see where it all takes us. Eight of Swords. Queen of Cups. Four of Swords. Eight of Cups. So, seems to be some healing is needed. I'm seeing um, some emotional fragility, like somebody who still might be a little raw. Now, this is the shared energy card, which means that even though I'm looking at the Queen of Cups, which may be your energy um, sensitive from some kind of a walking away, and maybe there's some healing needed. Maybe there's something here where you're part of the Eight of Swords is you feel stuck because you still haven't healed from some, it might be this relationship, but it could be other relationships where you were left behind or someone walked away. And so you get stuck in, in a cycle of overthinking something um, because you've been alone before, you've been left behind before, you've been rejected. You know, I'm seeing the walking away piece, but that's why I'm saying it could be, you know, any number of circumstances, been cheated on, been abandoned, been rejected, fill in the blank. It might be about this relationship, it might not. So that's your part of the Eight of Swords. And it's this person's part of the Eight of Swords because they, they know that they have to be able to back up any kind of commitment they make to you, anything, right? This is somebody who understands now that they're kind of stuck because you have possibly some unhealed energy around commitment because somebody pulled that out from under you before. So this is somebody who is, you know, really struggling in their karmic challenge. It can't be all about what they want. They can't just take what they want. They have to be someone who is, um, you know, bound to their obligations and responsibilities to the vows they make and take. They have to make good on their commitments. So do you see how I'm <laughs> putting that together? Um, and so I'm seeing a really good relationship and I'm also seeing how what, what we go through as souls having a human experience, how that, you know, um, very tender heart can often lead us to carry wounds forward, to just carry them forward. And then it becomes like an Indiana Jones boulder that flattens one relationship after another relationship after another relationship. And so your karmic challenge here is you're struggling with, I want this love. I've never had anything like this. Maybe for some of you, you may be saying, I think this is the one, I think this is the one, but your karmic challenge is, but I've, maybe I'm just better off alone. And that's coming from the unhealed heart. From, what, from my vantage point. So the opportunity is some patience with yourself and with this person and, you know, with they, and then with you as things unfold more gradually and organically. And then divine guidance is telling you, okay, and there's gotta be some areas of compromise where you can both get a win-win. I love this. Okay. Ace of Cups for you. Nine of Swords. Right There it is. And you're shut down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There it is. This could be the one. And now I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm worried. I, I, there's anxiety. There's worry. There's sleepless nights. So there goes the closing of the heart chakra, the self-protection, because I don't believe I'm going to get back that which I give. That's what, that's what's happening here. And, you know, I've, 
had a conversation with my daughter recently and you know she's having a very I mean it's almost like her story though she's not a Scorpio but you know that doesn't mean anything it could exactly be her story and she's saying I know I'm doing this to myself I know it's coming from another trauma from another situation and I know it is irrational and I know that it's just something that I, it just won't leave me alone it just won't get out of my head and it makes me shut down and I'm afraid that I'm going to give 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 and then I'm going to be replaced those were the words And I'm like, well, you just therapized yourself, my dear, because that's really it. So once you can name it, identify it, then it can be healed. So we see where you're at. You feel this person is the one and that's a trigger. Nope, maybe I'm better off alone. Maybe I'm better off alone because I don't think I'm going to get back that which I give. And the heart slowly starts to shut down. The person with the hierophant. Oh, knows they have a very important decision to make here. On an internal level, they're sensing this is really important. I got to get this one right. Um, trusting their intuition. There's King of Pentacles too. You know, this is, they got to be, they got to show up for you. They have to have your back. They have to, you know, make sure you feel that they're solid and predictable and reliable, that they do what they say they're going to do, that they are where they say they're going to be, you know, and that that high, high priestess is sort of like their inner knowing of how important this is, especially, you know, to you, how important this is that they get this right that they make this important decision because they sense that you have some emotional fragility around this. Or shall I say heightened sensitivity, if you prefer that. So your karmic challenge, Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles again. Spirit saying, yep, you got it right. Yep, right? Maybe I'm better off alone and never to have life partnership what's on the bottom king of cups in your internal landscape it's about you know the love that you don't get you don't get to keep for the long term Oh my goodness. And this is Scorpio energy, by the way. In case you're here as a cross watcher and you're identifying with this side, that's fine. There's your Scorpio. You can, like I said, it can be reversed. So let's see your person's karmic challenge, King of Wands. Page of Wands, the Sun. Five of Cups. Wow, yeah. I see it. I want it. I claim it. It's mine. Let's let's have fun. Fun and flirty. Exciting. Passionate. All the happiness and the joy. Let's not take things too seriously. And then we've got the regrets. Right? The mistakes. So this person's karmic challenge is... I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say they were a Leo, but, you know, but, but there's fifth house themes here. This is somebody who likes romance and pleasure and chemistry and passion and, you know, yeah, they're more into the pleasures of the flesh and, and so their karmic challenge is that then they, then they end up really regretting that approach because it comes on strong and it isn't their their inner knowing their intuition is telling them they have an important decision to make right because this is this is what you are this is what you need 
This is what you want. Is you're seeking a different kind of very, you know, sober-minded, serious, committed, no game plan. Oh, hell, nothing at my expense. Oh, no, no. I give you give. And their karmic challenge is they like to have a good time. They like to, you know, flirt. And uh, they're more, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to say it's not that this person isn't invested in this connection. It's that they don't, they don't lead with this very serious committed like they kind of come from all the their love language is like touch and cuddle and you know i got to keep this safe for youtube but you get my gist and and then they you know got to clean up the mess <laughs> they have the regrets like ah uh, because then somebody ends up feeling rejected when they leave. Um, and it takes time. There's, there's things grow organically. Um, and so if this is the person that kind of, you have this on and off thing with maybe, um, yeah, they have their karmic challenge is understanding that it can't always be playtime in the sandbox. That, and they're aware, at the very least, that this is an important crossroads, that they have a very, imp they are aware that they have an important decision to make about the future, commitment, showing up for you, being reliable, someone you can depend upon, being generous. Uh, they know. They get it. Oh, my. So let's see the Seven of Pentacles and the opportunity. Yeah, it'll take time. Wow. For the true colors to show, um, we've got five of pentacles, seven of cups. Underneath is the seven of swords. Um, the seven of pentacles, confusion, the five of pentacles, something that doesn't feel like it's on terra firma. It's like, it's a little, um, um, there's some insecurity, there's no trust for intentions. Um, I'm not seeing the Seven of Swords. In I'm just seeing it as some avoidance. And being that it's from the bottom of the deck, it almost feels like both of you avoiding um, because there's a lot of heavy emotions and questions about self-worth and value. And it's going to take time for this thing to evolve, meaning the healing that needs to take place, the worry that will slowly dissipate, the confusion that will slowly, you know, kind of come into some form of a reasonable sense of what you're both dealing with. We can turn this into something a little bit more stable over time, but you know, it's like something where if you both keep avoiding it, the opportunity is for patience so that these things can each sort of one by one sort themselves out. So I am feeling the sense of self-worth and value issues. I am feeling the confusion on both sides and I am feeling some avoidance on both sides. I'm like, I, I just, maybe I just shouldn't even deal with this. So let's see the divine guidance, which I think is a message about compromise. Like meet in the middle. What can you both agree to? Where are you both comfortable? Ah. Oh. Well, the hermit is talking about 
introspection and self-awareness, personal growth. You hear me say that all the time, but it's also a reference to timing, um, father time and the wisdom that comes from this sort of solitary journey. It's like this journey of personal growth. It's, it's like the journey of a lifetime it takes us, if you're not learning something about yourself almost every day, something's wrong. It's, 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 it's where, where are you learning? Where are you growing? Um, and maybe this connection is about that. That's the gift that you're being given from spirit. It's a gift of personal growth and self-exploration. It's part of the, of the destiny, of the fate of it all. And so where can you meet in the middle where you say, yeah, that's something that I value. The hermit talks about, you know, where you have some sense of value. What are you getting out of this? So I do feel like the six of wands, sixes are about balance and it's where we hit this level set. And maybe there's still some journeying you have to do on your own, sure, but it doesn't mean that the connection just has to stop. It's a work in progress. There are things that you can do by yourself. There are things this person can do on their own, but the connection continues. That's part of your journey, their journey. And I'm seeing this wheel of fortune underneath this like, like the okay sign from the universe. Yeah, this is part of the journey. And so it's not something this person has to make a de snap decision right now. It's not like your healing has to take place right now. There's some peace here. There's some kind of moment here where you get to say, I am learning something about myself and, and, I, and this person is growing too. And so I, I'm just seeing the divine guidance as you're not making it up. You're not hallucinating what's good in this connection but the ultimate focus and where we're getting the win-win in this connection is through the personal growth, through what you're learning about yourself and about each other, and shall it, so it shall continue. The wheel's moving in your favor. That's part of the gift of the connection. So I am going to take it to the extended. I wanna look at this person who I'm gonna to refer to as the King of Pentacles for now. And um, the link to that is below. There are a few links, so look at your options just so you know what you're signing on for. And for that, I'm going to look at their higher vibration, lower vibration, so you know what that might look like. And their, you know, what are the hidden energies that you can't see, uh, that they don't want you to see, frankly, but I'll, you know, it could be helpful. What is their message to you and some other area, um, areas that we can explore. So we're going to do that. Today is the last day for the um, Lionsgate private reading special, $88 off my regular rate. That link is still below, but tonight it will go away. So check that out. And I'm gonna give you the astrology that showed up, but before I did do that, if you've been enjoying this reading, if it's been clarifying, if it's been insightful, if it's been confirmational, and you haven't yet, please do subscribe below. Yeah, I wait till the end for a reason. I do want to earn your subscription. And, um, you know, that's the energetic exchange here. And so I, I ask for your subscription, your likes, your shares, whatever you feel called to do. Many, many thanks for all of you who have been doing so much to help me get back in YouTube's algorithm because something happened. People are starting to come in the comments now and say, oh, I'm so glad to see you back on YouTube. I haven't seen your readings in a long, long time. I don't know what happened, but it's like I disappeared from YouTube and I have been here. And many of you know, I have been here. I never went anywhere. So I don't know what, what the hell happened, but thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who have gone way above and beyond duty and please continue because if you stop i could disappear again who knows anyway here's the astrology guys queen of cups cancerian energy uh we have the hierophant is taurus 
our, our high priestess is the moon, which is actually the ruler of um, Cancerian, Cancer. Um, I lost my train of thought. King of Pentacles is also Taurus. We have the lovely Nine of Pentacles twice, that's Virgo. King of Cups, Scorpio. King of Wands is Leo, Page of Wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The sun is, the sun rules Leo. Uh, Hermit, Virgo. And the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius. I'm heading to the extended now. I'll see you there in a second. Bye.